You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the October 5th, 2022 meeting of the Michigan City Parks and Recreation Board. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportecounty.org. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday, October 5th Park Board meeting. If, if you could please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Shannon, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Lashford? Here. Mr. Freeze? Here. Mr. Lang? Here. Mrs. Sperling? Here. The minutes from our September 21st meeting were prepared in advance, presented. If there are, unless there are any changes or corrections, do we have a motion to approve? I would move we accept the meeting and the minutes of the 21st meeting uh, as printed. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. The minutes of our executive session of September 27th were also prepared in advance. So unless there were, uh, unless there are any changes or Corrections to have a motion to approve the executive session minutes. I so move that we approve the executive session minutes held on the 27th of this month. All right, I'm sorry, 27th. Yeah. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Any project updates tonight? Uh, only what's on the agenda further down. Any old business? No, sir. Table business? No, sir. All right, then we'll jump into new business, and that's the Accept proposal for design and engineering of water tower park innovation budget. Okay, if the board recalls, um, we received proposals after <laughs> September 7th meeting. We did receive uh, proposals from three different firms, and that was Butler, Fairman, and Cypher, Troyer Group, and Jones, Petrie, Rafinski, um, in conjunction with Hitchcock Design Group. They submitted a proposal together. A scoring team was put together and including myself, city planner Skylar York, and assistant city planner Sylvia Collins. The projects were scored on the firm's knowledge of the project, evaluation of the team's personnel to perform the project on time, technical expertise, predicted ability to manage the project, um, understanding of the project, and any innovation that would provide us with a cost or time saving. Uh, the firm has designed similar projects, and the firm has um, done projects using LWCF and CDBG uh, grants. So after completing the scoring and also looking at the uh, proposal amounts that were submitted, Butler, Fairman, and Cypher's final score was 565, which is out of 600. They're Projected amount was $108,800. Troyer Group scored $390 out of $600. Their proposed amount was $38,200, but it did not include bidding services or construction inspection, which were asked for in the proposal. And the final proposal from Jones, Petrie, Rafinski, and Pitchpot Group scored $600 out of $600 at wow. a cost of $57,000. Um, so I would recommend tonight that. Board accepts the proposal submitted by Jones, Petrie, Rapinski, and Hitchcock Group um, at a proposed amount of $57,000. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Uh, questions or comments? How much was the first one? I'm sorry, I didn't write that down for both. 108800 and it should be in your package. Oh. On this page. Oh, oh, there was a okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know why there's such an enormous difference between one and the other. Um, I don't because their proposals were, like I said, again, we went through them and scored them, and they both proposed on the exact same services. They were very clear. We just charged more. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? I just want to thank the scores who took the time from the planning department and Shannon to go through the uh, process. It's not a fun process. It takes a lot of time and effort to go through do that. And additionally, the systematic rational approach is 
is uh, appreciated and being well documented is also appreciated to bring it to us in this format and organized uh, just makes for it uh, easy to evaluate and just want to thank you for the time and effort because it's, it's time consuming but it really it makes it easy for us to evaluate it. Thank you. Actually, it was fun because we got to research all these playground projects. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, actually, this was a, a better one to score. It's great that you were able to have some fun with it. <laughs> if there are no other board questions, any comments or questions from the public? Seeing none, do we have a motion to accept the proposal for design and engineering the water tower renovation project? Uh, for the Jones, Petrie, Ravinsky, Hitchcock Design Group proposal. I would make that motion. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, following up with that, we need to award a contract and the notice to proceed. And those were both presented to us in our packet. <clears throat> any comments or questions on the, or uh, any commentary on the professional services agreement? I noticed you made when you sent it out, you made note of some changes that you went through. It seemed. Yeah, so this has been reviewed by both uh, branch wars and our attorney, um, Mrs. Nuremberg. Um, I would like to note, though, that the notice to proceed, I would ask the board to give me permission to issue notice to proceed once the uh, required certificate of liability has been furnished. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Right, my only comment is again, <clears throat> having that information in advance and the red line version of the contract again just makes analysis and review uh, very easy. So I appreciate the time and effort uh, preparing it in that fashion. Uh, any questions or comments from the public? If none, do we have a motion to enter into the professional services agreement as presented, as well as to issue a notice to proceed once we receive the liability of certificate of liability has been furnished? Oh, yeah, I'll make that motion to notice to proceed. Yes. Uh, Instructed uh, on the last page uh, where the agreement between the owner and the contractor and also the owner's representative, which is uh, Assistant Superintendent Shannon Easton. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right. Next up is the Hoosier Hikers event request. Thank you, Mr. Lashford. You're welcome. The Hoosier Hikers, a member club of the American Volks Sports Association, pr proposes <clears throat> to host a Volks March and a Volks Bike in Michigan City, Indiana on Saturday, October 15th of this year. It has been at least 10 years since this event has been held in Michigan City. Hoosier Hikers had previously hosted three events that started at Krieger Memorial Park. This year, they propose to handle all events, registrations, all event registrations in the parking area of Pullman Field and start the walk routes from the same location. The walk routes are six kilometers and 10 in length. The cyclists after completing registration will be directed to Westcott Park, their vehicles and begin the 12 kilometer bike event on the Singing Sands Trail. The start points would be open from 8 a.m. till noon <laughs> Central Daylight Time. It is anticipated that the events should attract 40 to 60 participants. And the representative from this organization is Mr. Buzelich, and he is here to yes. answer any questions. You may step up to the microphone. Good evening and welcome. Um, good evening, Mr. President. And I'm here to address any questions or issues that uh, you may have. It is my understanding that uh, Board of Works approved the event this past Monday, pending approval from the Board Authority and yourselves. And it's also my understanding that uh, Board Authority
the commission that also uh, provided tentative approval last night. So, thank you. Any questions or comments? I, I just had one question. And looking at the route directions, and you've got this down to a science. I mean, it just oh. tells you exactly where you're turning. Yes. Who is responsible for signage so that runners know exactly where they're going? And oh, we're not. Uh, there's a tendency to move away towards signage uh, because I other. I was saying it didn't have to be signage. Yeah. The person there says, go here. Yes. Yeah. The participants will be provided with uh, written directions and maps. Okay. Because many municipalities are moving away from allowing signage. Yeah, I anymore. understand. I, I should have just said if there, if people will have uh, the ability to know exactly where they're going. Yes. Okay. Uh, police department, everything is okay with them? Yes, I spoke, spoke with uh, the individual last week. Thank you. And he made the recommendation to approve it mm -hmm. on Monday at the Board of Works. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Monday night, the Port Authority also passed this to another oh. yeah. race to take place. Yeah. I want to tell you, I could even follow these directions. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get confused going to the store. Yes, <laughs> These are excellent. Oh, yes, they are. Any other questions or comments? Any questions from the public? And it looks like a great event. I wish you the best oh, of luck. Uh, thank a you. Motion, a motion to approve the Hoosier Hiker request. I so move that we approve the Hoosier Hikers event on uh, October the 15th, 2022. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Good luck. Thank you, Mr. President. And I hope you have good weather. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, next we'll have the approval for the final drawings and specifications for the old bandstand preservation project. Thank you. Both drawings and specifications were included in your packet. Um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. When we first started designing this, we did ask Hill Architecture to put in as an alternate the globe lighting that used to be on each column of the bandstand. Um, the estimated cost for that is around $32,000. So after further consideration, um, I hate to be afraid of vandalism, but that is a mm -hmm. big chunk of our budget. So it's, it still remains in here as an alternate, but something that needs to be seriously discussed before construction starts. Um, the only other change that's happened since your last review and approval is they have added a three foot concrete ring around the base for drainage. Um, currently, there's a lot of damage um, underneath the soil from drainage issues over the last uh, five, six, seven decades. Um, I wasn't crazy about this ring at first, but I reached out to um, some people in historical societies and uh, the questers, which are kind of now disbanded, but one of them is a dear friend of mine. No one seemed to think it was an issue really because it will preserve the structure for decades. Um, the alternate drainage is underground drainage, which we'll still have, and then crushed limestone, which is kind of a maintenance issue for us and would need to be replaced. Um, their guess is every five years. So that's a short term fix. Mm -hmm. um, Ed and I discussed it as far as like plantings around the base. Well, there were no plantings originally, and the plantings actually led to deterioration underground by holding too much moisture. Mm -hmm. So this would mm -hmm. prevent that in the future as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it also shows off the base. You know, the base of the bandstand has real cool architecture to it, which was hidden for many, many years mm -hmm. because people tried to beautify structures. So. I'm okay with the three foot ring now after talking to you people. I just wanted to point that out. That was the major change. Um, the grantor approved the drawings and specification yesterday. We are required to get state historic preservation office approval of these drawings before we start construction. So those were shut down yesterday, and that's because it's uh, grant funded and it's on the National Register of Historical mm -hmm. Places. Mm -hmm. Um, they did do, they did approve the last set of drawings that was board approved, um, so I don't see any issue for the fighting. Thank you, Shannon. Cool. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm, uh, sorry, Shannon, would you run that light business past me again, please? The lights? Yes. 
So on the original bandstand when it was built, each of these columns had a light fixture with three round globes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then at the time, the walkways also had lamp posts that matched the three globe features. So I really wanted it to be historically accurate, but when I got the estimated costs, you know, this is a two hundred thousand dollar project. Thirty-two thousand of it just for light fixtures just me is excessive. And again, I worry about vandalism and replacement. We would have to replace them in a year or two. Yeah, there's no real maintenance done to do that. So um, it's up for discussion with everyone. Uh, I'm going to include it in the bid as an alternate, but. My recommendation would be not to set that for that thirty-two thousand. Is that more running electrical, or is that the actual fixtures that are the bulk of it? Okay, so there would be a different kind of light there if we don't do the three globe. No light. Okay, as it is today. Mm -hmm. it's today. Yeah. Again, it's oh, just decorative. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of lighting on this structure right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just like to go back to original, but that's a pretty high cost and I think it's a high risk item. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, just, I was just asking, I didn't know if there was a, a less expensive way to do it that looked kind of like the three globe lighting and the fixture. Maybe a custom application. Yeah. Not something we want in our hearts. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something to look at. That's why I included it in the alternate because so I really don't know how to fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if that's on the historical registry, is there any any problem not having those there? No. Problem with uh, the registry is altering something that exists today to make it different. You don't have to preserve it back to exactly what it was, but if we were going to say take one of the columns out, we would not be allowed to do that. Okay. Wow. Any other questions or comments? Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, I would move that we uh, accept the final drawing specification and bid documents uh, as enclosed in our packet. Now second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. And thank you, Shannon, for the additional commentary and uh, the details. Much appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the light. That's didn't understand it. All right. Now we have the 2023 golf season pass rules and refund policy and discount. So proposal. typically, um, all of the fees for our department <laughs> to golf course and all administrative fees and contracts are presented to the board first meeting of October. Um, I've delayed that process. Um, we had a meeting last week and we're working with our insurance carrier, Charlie Keen, and our attorney, Nuremberg, to streamline some of the insurance requirements, make sure they're up to date, and indemnification language. So we had somewhere around 23 different contracts. They all have different amounts, different language, and it's just kind of a mess. Um, so we've really narrowed that language down. We're waiting on a final approval from Charlie Keene. In the future, we always give you a list of all the fees and contracts that we're submitting. We have added indemnification and insurance. So it's approved every year, not midstream. Something got increased, which happened this year. Um, trying to get out ahead of it before we sign these contracts. And we've also added templates for construction contracts, uh, professional services contracts, hold harmless agreements, and what's the other? Um, in any case, these are templates that we use. Oh, quote, our quote template. Uh, we use these throughout the year, so I think it just makes sense to once a year get all those approved as well. So moving forward, everyone is using the correct template. Everyone is using the correct insurance. And all of the indemnification language um, have been approved by an attorney. So there is a delay. I do expect to have these on your next agenda. However, the season pass um, rules and sale dates need to be approved so I can get the passes ordered in time to start selling them on November 6th. Thank you, Shannon. You're welcome. Any questions or comments? Just a comment. I <clears throat> 
uh, again, they look very similar. I'm glad to see the uh, refund uh, policy stated. Uh, I remember it was last year there were, matter of fact, I think every year there's been a question as to how come I can't refund it because my father died or I can't play anymore. So I, it's pretty much cut and dried right here in, in front. And I also like the fact that they're supposed to check in. Ed, do we have um, people that, rangers out there, because I know of people who just go out and start playing. They're, they have a, a season pass, but they just go out and start playing. They do not check in. I'm not going to mention any names, but I, I, I know they are. We have told them before to make sure that the strangers find the people and get their receipt. And I'm sure that we have rangers out there. I have to look into Just it. curious. Yeah. Thank you. That Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Jim, are, the, uh, are these rules for use in the season pass refund policy the same as in prior years? Any changes? They are. Only those sale dates have changed. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments from the board? Any public comments? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the 2023? Golf season pass rules and refund policy and 10% sale dates. Um, I would do move that we accept the 2023 golf season pass rules and refund policy uh, and the 10% sale discount uh, for this up and coming gear. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, before we get into <clears throat> The next section, it's all got to do with resolutions. Even before tonight, um, there seemed to be a floor proliferation or more resolutions than we normally have. Do you have any comment towards that, Shannon? Is that an accurate assessment or why are we faced with this? And some seemingly so small, $30, uh, it's, it begs the question as to why. Why so many? Why so many and why some with so little dollar amount when it seemingly is in the same account? I saw one for 30 bucks. It's 36 dollars. Yeah. So in order to like pay your actual expenses, say something you just purchased out of small clothes, you really don't want to purchase it out of super actual. So if they had an invoice that was 36 dollars, sure. They want to move it into small tools. So when we look at here on small tools, we're going to need an after account. Yeah, but now, does that have to be done in a resolution? I thought if they were under a certain dollar amount, we could. It's not dollar amount, it's the account. So if you look at third set of numbers, four, three, four, two. Or okay. Numbers, gotcha. It's in the same set of minor transfer. Thank you. Um, a lot of these have to do with repairs when you're seeing stuff going into contractual services. And a lot of it's coming out of seasonal wages because we have not been able to staff. Um, and then the other thing is inflation. I mean, everything we did this year mm. was so inflated mm -hmm. that to operate, we were just forced to move money around in small tools, contractual, mm -hmm. you know, even like zoo food, the delivery fees are just astronomical, fuels up. So, yes, we have had a lot of. So are we, uh, whenever we see seasonal wages being decreased, are we basically just got lucky that we have money there to, to move into these other accounts and that Absolutely. we were just. Yeah, it's not something that you can depend on that we're going to have next year because if we were fully staffed, then what is it that we're cutting out? Are we leaving a $17,000 loan to repair there because we can't pay for it? Yes, mm -hmm. or we're coming back to the council for an additional appropriation. Uh, we did ask for real increases in our budget based on all the completion. Um, and each line was noted, you guys saw all the comments. You know, lumber was up at the beginning of the year, 225%. So all of that was noted. Uh, we haven't gotten our final budget yet. The past last night. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a great point. I mean, we. We can't plan on having this excess next year, so mm -hmm. we're not overspending. 
it's just everything is costing so much more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I had a question on that note. So if you if you are in this situation where you're not using all the payroll, you know, that's budgeted for that, would you then uh, would it would any department, would they try to spend that money? Like, you know, do maybe some things that you weren't planning on doing to use that money? Is there, is there a benefit not to that? It's necessary. No, there's not a benefit. To okay. It. Do you get to keep that in your... No, we don't keep it. We lose you it. Gotta, the downside yeah. is that, you know, if you look at a projection over three years and see that we didn't use 40% of our seasonal budgets across the board, mm -hmm. the risk is they'll cut that. Yeah. And did we need the seasonal staff? Absolutely. Yeah. We just couldn't get them. Right. So. Right. We've been in a balancing action for about three years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but no, this isn't money that just go buy yourself something nice. Should be yeah. And I didn't mean that. I mean, obviously, maybe, yeah, yeah things that you pushed off from the last year because you didn't have money. It's like, well, then let's go ahead and get this fixed. Yeah. You know, is that what yeah. some of this so, is? Yeah. Most of right. Simply covering inflation. Yeah. 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 Um, and hopefully, everything we ask for in our budget will come through. Yeah. We won't be in this next mm -hmm. year. Already. Right. Hopefully prices will come down. Yeah, we hope so. Right. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> All right. With that, we have 10 of these resolutions, yeah. and we'll get through them as quickly as possible. I'll I'll read the first one as we've been doing. And then the other ones we'll just we'll just um, refer to the fund number and if no one has an objection. Mm -hmm. All right, it's fine. Resolution number 976, whereas the superintendent of the park, Department of Parks and Recreation has reported that certain transfer funds are necessary within the budget of the Michigan City Department of Parks and Recreation because of unanticipated expenses from various accounts, which accounts do not have sufficient funds available for disbursement for said expenses, and whereas there are funds available for said purposes in various other accounts, which are not expected to be paid from set accounts during the remainder of this budget year and whereas the Michigan City Park and Recreation Board has determined that set expenses are necessary and that an account transfer should be made in order to meet set expenses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following transfer be made from the following named accounts to the following named accounts for the purposes stated herein. Decrease fund 2056503, recreation fund seasonal wages 15,000, increase fund 2056503, Contractual fifteen thousand. Unless there are any uh, objections, or we have a motion to approve. I would move we accept resolution nine seven six. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. No. All right. Resolution number nine seven seven. Decrease fund two zero five three triple zero concession fund. Contractual North Point thirty six dollars. Increase fund two zero five three concession fund. Small Tools, North Point, $36. Do you have a motion to approve resolution number 977? Uh, I would move we accept resolution 977. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Vote. All right, next is resolution number 978, decrease fund 2056505 maintenance fund, vacation buyback, $140. Increase fund 2055 maintenance fund, repairs and maintenance building, $140. Do you have a motion to approve resolution number 978? So move we accept resolution <clears throat> number nine seven eight. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Resolution number nine seven nine. Decrease fund two zero five six five zero five senior center vacation buyback one thousand nine hundred ten dollars. Increase fund two zero five zero six two zero five six dot five zero six senior center fund insurance liability sixty seven dollars. Contractual one thousand eight hundred forty three dollars. We have a motion to approve resolution number 979. I would move we accept resolution number 979. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Resolution 980, decrease fund 2062 triple zero golf fund seasonal wages $22,535. Increase fund 2062 triple zero golf fund contractual $1,008,100. Other supplies, merchandise, two thousand. Insurance liability, two hundred thirty-five dollars. And auto insurance, two hundred dollars. Telephone, three thousand dollars. And charges and fees, nine thousand dollars. We have a motion to approve resolution number nine eighty. I move to accept resolution number nine eight zero. Second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion. Resolution nine eighty one, decrease fund. 
2011000, REC, non-reverting fund, small tools, $1,000, increased fund, 2011000, REC, non-reverting fund, charges and fees, $1,000. Resolution to approve resolution number 981. Move we accept resolution 981. Second it. Aye. 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 Resolution number 982, decrease fund 2056503, recreation fund, seasonal wages, $347, increase fund 2056503, recreation fund, telephone, $300, and insurance liability, $47. We have a motion to approve resolution number 982. I would move we accept resolution number 982. Second it. Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution number 983, decrease fund 2056-504, zoo fund, zoo food, $4,134, medical supplies, $222. Increase fund 2056-504, zoo fund, vacation buyback, $3,070, vacation bonus, $314, insurance liability, $270, auto insurance, $480, and water, $222. So we have a motion to approve resolution number 983. We move we accept resolution 983. Second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution number 984, decrease fund 2053 concession fund, seasonal salaries $12,000, household supplies $2,000, increase fund 2053 concession fund, other supplies $12,000, and contractual $2,000. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 984? I would move we uh, accept resolution 984. Second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right. And finally, resolution number 985, decrease fund 2056505, maintenance fund, seasonal salary 7,000, increase fund 2056505, maintenance fund, small tools, minor equipment $7,000. Do we have a motion to approve resolution number 985? I would move we accept resolution 985. Second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Any other new business tonight? That's fine. All right. We'll move right on to the uh, superintendent's report. Mr. Shin. Thank you, President Gladsford. You're welcome. This evening, I will be discussing park maintenance, golf maintenance, the zoo, Hanson Park, and 121 Tulip Tree Street encroachment onto Mott's Woods. Not in that order. So uh, I would like to start with park maintenance and golf maintenance. Both of, uh, both entities there are working diligently uh, to keep their grounds maintained. Um, the park maintenance crew is uh, working to uh, plant trees now that they have uh, removed some dead trees and dangerous trees. Uh, golf maintenance is still actually pumping water and watering the grass where the park maintenance is taking advantage of the good weather and winterizing the pipes at this time of year. Uh, at the zoo, I got a report from Jamie, the director, Mrs. Huss. Uh, due to the colder temperatures, the zoo has started to move some of the tropical species indoors since they cannot tolerate the weather. This includes the parrots, the lemurs, and the tortoises. The zoo has completed their decorating for Boo at the zoo and has 36 local businesses and groups signed up to be candy stations for the kids. Tickets are limited due to the candy supply, but are still on sale at the office and online. Boo at the Zoo is October 22nd, 1030 a.m. to 330 p.m. The tiger and lion habitat expansions are coming along with great progress. The inner shift cage is complete, which is allowing the two species of cats to rotate the time outdoors safely. Uh, okay. You'll see a photo of that cage that you approved of as a, as a change order. Uh, on the construction here shortly. Uh, the cage will be a permanent feature for the future habitat work medical and medical procedures. The zoo completed all the work that was needed to be done in the jungle building and held a safety training meeting while the zoo was closed from September 19th to September 23rd. So let's look over to the pictures we have right there is uh, our maintenance crew beginning the priming and painting of the stair railing at Millennium Park. I think that's going to be a nice facelift for Millennium Park. I was there last week when the my friends from the Sinai Temple had the ceremony of Rosh Hashanah, and uh, they were uh, there to throw stones into the uh, Trail Creek to absolve them from their sins. So I handed out stones to them. Some of them 
needed a few more than just one stone. <laughs> uh, there's Ricky Jackson again, painting that railing. I think that's a nice touch. The sand beats that railing up and it's uh, really gonna look nice. Uh, this is an interesting picture that shows the effectiveness of our attorney, Ms. Nurnberg's letter to the folks who encroached on Mott's Woods. This is the shed and the structures, uh, the sidewalk and pathway to their uh, patio, which had a, <clears throat> a fire uh, station and everything else. They had speakers. And uh, you can see that uh, the letter was effective because only a week later, these people were cordial when I visited them and I uh, found all of the items were taken away. No. Oh, wow. So that shows that Ms. Nuremberg's letter was very effective. Yeah. Uh, we will want to discuss um, at some point in time, the fact that they did remove the structure and the items like the patio, but will we want to um, further ask them to bring the, uh, the trees back to life. Uh, they cut some trees down, apparently. We're not sure if they were dead or if they had already fallen, but we probably should discuss the fact that we want them to restore the nature habitat that they took down. Uh, next would be the zoo uh, cat, and, uh, cat habitat. And this is a picture that shows that the east end uh, is, is not being worked on because of the tight uh, area to be working in. The far end is where they are continuing to work. Progress is at this west end. And once the west end is complete with the structural uh, beams and columns, then they will work the other end. So this is the west end. You can go to the next one. This shows the beams and the columns. Columns are made of block filled cores with rebar and concrete. And you can go to the next one. Okay, we're moving on to Hanson Park. And I just want to say I visited Hanson Park and it was very well maintained as usual. And it seems like every time I go to Hanson Park, people are using the kayak launch. Go to the next one. This is the transfer cage that you approved of being an addition to the contract. It was welded and created so uh, Miss Jamie Huss could transfer the uh, lions and tigers uh, so they're able to share their habitats. Uh, and she uses that also for medical purposes when she needs to sedate them. Now, here's an interesting delivery today. These are the whale bone beams. These are the beams that are decorative that support the mesh at the top. Uh, these beams are uh, very large, very heavy, and they are the uh, the beautiful part of this addition. So they were delivered today and they'll start to install them tomorrow. And there is a beam that's very uh, long. It's 52 feet long, believe it or not, and very tight spaces. And it just shows how difficult the work is for Holiday Construction, who, by the way, is doing a very good job building this cat habitat. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Shins. Any questions, comments? <coughs> Vandalism down? Vandalism is down a little bit, but I do have to report that we have a few broken sprinklers, uh, 20 broken sprinklers at Millennium Park, which were probably deliberate. Sometimes a sprinkler will be broken by a subcontractor that works in their uh, landscaping, but 20 sprinklers plus or minus have been kicked off. Oh, so All all right, and is there any other questions or comments? We'll move on to the liaison reports. The Planning Commission did have a meeting. I did not attend, but I was able to uh, review the meeting, and there was nothing pertaining to the park. Uh, Port Authority, Mr. Freeze? Um, yes, they had a meeting this week, uh, last week before that, when it was scheduled. They didn't have enough people. I was the only one who showed up. But the, there was nothing really uh, that would concern us. Thank you. And Zoological Society, Mr. Lane? The Zoological Society will not meet until next Tuesday, so I will have a report then at the next meeting. Thank you. Uh, attorney's report, Ms. Nierberg. 
Thank you, Mr. Latchford. You're welcome. I'm just reflecting back on what Ed said earlier, the superintendent had said earlier with regards to the restoration. As many of you will recall in the cease and desist letter, it did specifically ask that they restore the area. Uh, kudos to the people for doing what they did and acting so quickly. I mean, certainly we're, we're thrilled, beyond thrilled with that, right? Um, I don't want to be nitpicky, but what is important is that this, this woods is deliberately supposed to be kept in a natural condition, as evidenced by the aerial footage. Um, we know that there were several trees removed, um, but I did want to at least toss that out to the board for consideration or discussion. We don't need to do anything with it tonight, but if you want to, we can. Just something that just wanted to plant a seed to let you know that that wasn't exactly what we asked for. Um, we'll do with that what, what you, whatever you decide. I just wanted to start that discussion. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Well, I think Mr. Shin brought up, uh, do we know if those trees were in good order or were there some rot to them? We have no reason to think that they were not. Okay. And the surrounding area looks to be in perfect health. So realistically speaking, if you have a diseased tree, there's gonna be more than one, especially in a heavy wooded area. Thank you. And how many trees do you think can you tell how many were removed? There, there's no way for me to tell from this picture. Yeah. Well, here, I mean, you can pass that around. You'll see it's very heavily wooded. The area that they cleared out is not. Yeah. In order to put all of that down, they would have had to clear out several. Right. So we've enlarged their livable or outdoor use of space. Extensive. Yes. Yeah, and what I forgot what what is like maybe the square footage or the area? You'll see. Okay. Is okay. Very clear on that. Okay. I'm guessing myself. Yeah. Over. So in context, historically, what has happened before, and during, in the Esplanade, people have removed trees, mm. and we did uh, engage litigation and had them reimburse us for the cost of the trees, in which we planted more trees. So is it we certainly second? can't replace a 75-year-old tree, no. yeah. right? So it's yeah. not realistic for us to say, okay, oh, give yeah. us the trees back. Yeah. Um, they could plant new trees or, or just I don't give it all pick for that. Yeah. yeah, I think you know, Brian, do you want to take a look at the Oops. Without planting new trees, they'll they could just maintain that extra space as if it's theirs, which would go against the intent of the spirit, the spirit and the intent of providing that area not to be developed. Yeah, it is an attractive area for them to just move back over, right? It's all grass and yes. oh, right. <laughs> and I'm not suggesting they would just sure. Yeah. Yes. Certainly an attractiveness. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the contract that says if something is removed that it has to be replaced or replicated? Or is it is this just something that that removing these trees was something that had to be done in order for their construction to there was no contract they encroached on property that was not there oh, okay. so there was no agreement okay yeah that would make it a whole different scenario yes. right yeah. okay. yeah, nobody came dust masked if it was okay that's why the, the letter was yes. <laughs> could we go back to the yeah. picture andrew could we go back to the picture of the area yeah. area that after it was clean from us from the structures uh, the reason I bring this up, Mr. President, is that I found out today from our inspector that this homeowner is now putting the house up for sale. And I see that we have uh, huh. allowed them to keep their grass and their flowers and their bushes. Uh, will the next owner think that that's their property or maybe take advantage of that? So I'm just thinking that might be a talk. Hmm. Well, I think we need to, and whatever we can do, preserve the integrity of the intent of the gift of the deeding of that property by not allowing improvements on it. I think that was the, I'd have to go back and look, but we should probably, just as my opinion, vote on it or we could take it under advisement as to how to proceed from here. But I believe it was not to be disturbed. And it was can under our purview to make sure that that happens. Uh, one thing that Mrs. Nuremberg did, did find out that this parcel was donated by Harbor Trust. Yes, I'm sorry. This parcel was donated by Harbor Trust. It was not the original Mott's area, which is further to the north. 
So we'll have to look at. That. So there may be different different conditions. Yes, it should be different language. Okay, maybe we should mm -hmm. investigate that. Then. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? It doesn't have? negate that you know, yeah. the Absolutely. natural condition was altered. Okay. Certainly, we're not all just such a strict standard. Okay. Presumably speaking, but I will certainly compare the two. Thank you. Is is this so? This is listed with a real estate company, like on the MLS right now. You said they're selling I, their house. No. Oh. Just based on what the superintendent was told, the house is going to be up for sale. Oh, going to be um, okay. The property that we're talking about that the parks for the city owns. That's not for sale. Right. That, and the property adjacent to it to the north is a huge parcel that was given to us in dedication to keep it in its natural condition in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's very special property. Yeah. And this abuts the land we got from Harbor Trust, which was also the Girl Scout now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a recent transfer for mm -hmm. 2016. What's wow. bizarre about it is it's labeled Mott's Woods. Mm. So I mm. don't know if that was part of it that they wanted to include it to expand the natural area oh. because that's the way it's labeled. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen anything in writing that indicates that. And mm. the superintendent even went to the real estate office and couldn't find much of anything huh. that's very useful. Yeah, and this is all. This is one parcel number right here. It is. Yeah. And that that's not Mottswoods. Mottswoods is oh the parcel the eighteen acre and then a two acre to the east. Um, that's the 20 acres of Mott's. Mm. Oh, so this isn't Mott's Woods right here. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's labeled Mott's Woods. That's yeah. where the confusion arises. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like I said, it almost as if when the transfer happened, they wanted to include it mm -hmm. into that preservation. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like just from first glance. Mm -hmm. but I'm not finding much information or documented history. Yeah. And the superintendent wasn't able to access it. Yeah, so, but we can keep digging and see what is mm -hmm. on the deed and then report that. And also, it doesn't look like even if we did a drive by, you could see they have taken up all of their property. Yes. So you can't even drive by and look at this. Right. OK, um, I would say just to, <clears throat> that we should watch out for when this does go on the market and look at the description of it. Because if in the description, they may say, oh, we have this extra all this back here, you know, um, Sure, and even if they don't disclose it, a new owner is going to right. understandably think. Right. Yes. And that we should be in touch with the person listing it to make it clear to any buyer that that is not part of that property, because that's kind of the problem with the Esplanade, right? Yeah. What's that? The seller's affidavit could reflect that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, this belongs to the city. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably property is adjacent, but separated by an easement, power mm. poles, electrical oh. lines. Oh, wow. So it is kind of visible where. Yeah, okay. Is. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't there be a plot with the square footage and of that? Some, some places there a plot with the, the square footage of where the property lines run? Well, it's right there. Well, sure, there's a plot. I mean, but uh, yeah. to, Say, hey, look, this is all the further you can go. I, I checked with the real estate office and the, the properties of the homes have been surveyed, but Mott's Woods hasn't, or this Harbor Trust property has not been okay. surveyed. Any other questions or comments? I like Mr. Sperling's idea. Let's hold up here. For further discussion. Sounds good. Well, thank you for that report. Any director's reports tonight? <coughs> thank you. And Department Finance, Mr. Lender. All right. Claims docket for October the 5th, 2022. Municipal $60,782.67. <coughs> Golf Petty Cash $990.70. A zoo endowment, none. Total claims for October the 5th, 2022, $61,773.37. I so move that we approve the claims docket for October the 5th. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Payroll number 19 with a pay date of September the 23rd, 2022. Total payroll of $81,919.34. 
I so move that we approve payroll number 19. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under gifts and donations, Horizon Bank Zoo Donation, Boo at the Zoo, $350. Ivy Tech Foundation Zoo Donation, Boo at the Zoo, $350. Leeds Public House Zoo Donation, Boo at the Zoo, $350. DeVries Tire Zoo Donation, Boo at the Zoo, $200. The Antique Market Zoo Donation, Boo at the Zoo, $200. Um, unknown. Zoo donation was a roundup program, $1.34. A known zoo donation coin raiser, raiser $23.48. MC Christian Church zoo donation, boo at the zoo, $350. Black Rock Real Estate zoo donation, boo at the zoo, $450. Michigan City Zoological Society zoo donation, boo at the zoo, $350. I so move that we approve the gifts and donations. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Under minor transfers from maintenance fund 2056.505, a decrease in account 422, medical supplies $65, decrease in account 413, vacation buyback 4000 an increase in account 421.005, office supplies $65, increase in account 411.016, overtime $4,000. Under administrative fund 2056, a decrease in account 423, repair parts $333, a decrease in account number 433, printing contractual $1,028, an increase in account 421, Office supplies, 333. Increase in account, 434. Insurance liability, $1,028. Zoo fund, 2056. Decrease in account, 422. Zoo food, $10. Decrease in account, 436. Repair slash maintenance equipment, $11. Decrease in account, 439. Other services slash education, $475. Decrease in account 435 sewage, $1,758. Increase in account 421 office supply, $10. Increase in account 435, $2,244. Zoo concessions, uh, this is uh, account uh, 2053, Fund River. Uh, decrease in account 421005 office supply, $900. Decrease in account 423, small tools, $1,000. Decrease in account 429, other supplies, peacock, $4,000. Decrease in account 429, other supplies, concessions, $3,000. Decrease in account 423.031, household supplies, $3,000. And increase in four, account 429, other supplies, $11,900. I so move that we uh, approve the minor transfers in the maintenance fund, the administration fund, the zoo fund, and the zoo concessions fund. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under yeah. zoo endowment, none at this time. Under board of works, uh, invoices totaling $1,775 were paid at the September 20th board of works meeting to Otocost LLC, Art Committee, dash annual maintenance fee slash new locations. I so move that we recognize the Board of Works uh, invoice. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Under credit card charges, credit card charges totaling $1,154.48 were paid to corporate payment systems for the following. Webrestaurant.com, zoo concessions, Dash cold cups, $546.77. Uh, IN.gov administration, North Point violations, $82.87. IN.gov administration, North Point elevator permits, $524.84. I so move that we approve credit card charges totaling $1,154.48. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion period. That ends the financial report. 
Thank you, Mr. Lang. Uh, any questions from the public tonight? Any board comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, our next meeting is Wednesday, October 19th, right here at 5 p.m. Motion to adjourn. So move.